integrated shipping solution integrated into Dynamics GP. So they connect uh, the order entry and customer service and accounts receivable with uh, by automating the, the best shipment provider based on all the rules of the shipment. So they're a strategic UPS ready partner, gold FedEx compatible solution partner, partner but they also have a wide range of local carriers and uh, small parcel regional LTL. And just a little bit about the workflow real quick. Um, so we're going to be talking about how that order comes in through scan, fax, email. It's a document. It's digitized with Artsil Intelligent Data Capture. And all that information is sent into GP. And Starship will pick up that information and, like I said, automate the selection of the most efficient carrier economic, economically uh, based on all the rules of the shipment, the dimensional weight, the cost. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and let Mark get started. So Mark, I'm going to make you presenter. Great. Thank you, Adrian. Appreciate it. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen here. Hopefully you folks can see the right screen. Should be just a um, sales order automation and smart process technology. We see it. All right, great. So good morning, good day, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mark Iranza, as Adrian mentioned. Thank you for the introduction. And we have a, a pretty solid solution um, that Chris and I will be presenting to you folks today. Um, before I get into the actual demonstration, I just want to go ahead and lay, just lay the land, give you a couple of um, key points of the um, input processing of, of sales orders and the automation of that we're using Doc Alpha, which is our, our smart process automation or sales order automation technology. Um, just, you can see there on my screen, if uh, you guys have any questions, I think um, Adrian also um, introduced it as far as the contact information. Um, if you're on social media, you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I'm also on LinkedIn, um, you know, just to learn more, have more educational series about document automation in general. So just, I promise, just a few slides um, that, we'll be, that we'll be going through here. So why should you consider, consider the sales order processing from a document automation point of view? Um, here are some few points that uh, we typically present to, to users. Uh, you know, you're going to be getting the paper. Uh, you would typically hand key that paper into, um, into GP. Uh, there could be errors in entering that data. There could be paper being lost somewhere along the way. Um, and you know, it's, it's sales order. So it's actually uh, the faster you process an order, the quicker you'll get your money's worth at the end of the day, right? Um, so th these are basically just some reasons on why you should consider uh, automating the sales order process. In addition to that, there's a couple of studies and a couple of organizations that we have partnered with, um, and we've done some studies, you know, why would you automate the sales order process? And you can see there that some of the um, higher studies that we have done, percentages response from people is, to reduce overall cost, um, you know, soft and hard, you know, indirect and direct costs related to processing a sales order. And then lastly, one more graph that we have here, um, you know, one of the highest reasons for sales order automation is to reduce the daily sales outstanding. The faster you can process an order, um, you know, the faster you can go ahead and once again, get your revenue. Just some facts and figures that, that we have. Uh, we have the low, mid, and, and high. We can certainly go into that in detail, you know, um, after uh, you want to know more about where the studies come from and what it's all about. But, but typically from a middle, um, middle road, what we have found, there's typically, you know, about a 48 day sales outstanding um, average that it would take for people to receive an order and to process it. And once again, with the solution um, that we're presenting to you from the input side and what Chris will be presenting from the um, shipping side, I, I think these days can actually be uh, lowered or minimized. And you can see some of the other facts and figures that we have here. So what is the solution um, that we have for you? The solution from Artsel is called Order Action. Order Action um, is a solution for incoming orders, sales orders. So if you receive it via paper, um, if you receive it via email, if you receive it via mobile or, or fax or a fax server, um, we can ingest those, um, those methods of input. So if you're, you have paper, you would scan it, we would bring it in, 
Um, your email, we could simply monitor an email address if you have a dedicated email address and bring that order in automatically. So you don't have to worry about you know, detaching it or, or printing it out and scanning it in. So we can autom automatically take it from a digital format and other methods that you, that you see there. From there, we can do classification. Um, in this case, we're focusing on, on orders, but if you receive other different document types, we can certainly bring those in and as you know, Adrian mentioned earlier, digitize it. So making sense of the document, reading the data element so you don't have to key it in. From there, we will extract the necessary data. So this is the equivalent to your manual data entry. We would extract, um, you know, the, we would identify who the vendor is. We would extract the, the order number, the date, um, even line item details, um, descriptions, and so on. And you'll see a little bit of an example of that uh, during my demonstration. Once we extract the data, there's another um, process that happens. And, and this is um, actually optional, depending if you wanna take advantage of this or not. We can simply extract the data and push the data into GP. If you have a GP workflow or maybe a, um, you know, a third party workflow that you're pushing an order process through for approvals or what have you, that could be done. Or if you wanna do the extraction as well as some validations to that extracted data, um, you know, doing the lookups, performing a matching against the, you know, we have the sales order coming in against the quote or, or the pack slip um, documents or what have you. And then we can also perform some duplicate order detections and some mathematical calculations within that extracted data. So really once we have the data, once we have all those elements, um, the possibilities are pretty much endless as far as we can, what we can do with it um, from a doc alpha or from Arts point of view. And this is really what we're trying to address. Uh, you know, Artsel in itself, we are, um, we are here to help you minimize the document handling process. Um, you know, if you're receiving it via paper, you scan it and then from there it's digital. So you have an auditable um, visibility of where your orders are coming through. Straight through process means having to not touch the actual document until it's ready for further processing in GP. Um, so really, that's, that's what our goal is. That's what we're trying to achieve. And I'll show it to you how we can go ahead and, and um, get to that. OK, so I'm going to jump into the demonstration. Um, hopefully, you got a little bit of uh, details and, and facts on, on those uh, PowerPoints. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into, um, jump into our demonstration and show you what's going on. Um, I do have a couple of examples. So here's a, here's a purchase order or a sales order. I'm gonna go ahead and, and push in three of them, as you can see here. Um, and this is what we refer to, if those of you that are not familiar with, with OCR, or optical character recognition, um, as a semi-structure OCR, meaning that um, you know, none of the data actually is in the same place. All my, all my um, customers have their different layouts, have their own little different um, line items and so on. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and bring this into um, Doc Alpha. Once it goes into Doc Alpha, it's gonna go through an extraction process. And this is where the brains of the operations happen. This is where we're identifying um, you know, the, the, the customer, we're identifying um, all the fields that you would typically key into uh, the GP um, sales order transaction entry. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into, just give you the user experience. Once again, um, you know, this is a webinar. Uh, if you guys wanna go get deeper into the technology or get deeper into the process, you know, how would this work in my environment, um, please feel free to reach out to me and we can go ahead and, and, and handle that. But, but in this case, I'm gonna focus more on the end user experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up what we call our verification screen. Our verification screen is um, a human intervention screen. So this is where your, um, you know, order processor or, or somebody would go ahead and take a look at any um, either low confidence level characters. So, um, you know, maybe some, some characters that the system did not read pro properly, or there may be some mathematical uh, or, yeah, math mathematical validations. Uh, as we mentioned, we can perform those calculations and let you know if something's not right. So let me show you what that user experience looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a transaction that we have here. So just a little bit of a, of a navigation of what you have here. So here I have my batch structure. On the right-hand side, we have the image. And as you can see here, as I 
hover over my image itself. This is what we call digitizing. So we tip the, the doc alpha system, the order action system has read the whole document. And really we've made sense of the document itself. We have, you know, the item codes, we have the quantities, all those are now um, data available for you to click on if needed to enter data into the system. On the left hand side uh, bottom here, this is all of our extracted information. So as you can see, we have our um, phone number that we have there. And as you can see, as I click on the fields to the left, it is actually highlighted on the image itself to the right. So if I go into the PO number, as an example, you'll see that it's highlighted there. PO date and so on. Now you can see up here, bringing your attention back up to, to the batch. I have one of my transactions with a yellow triangle on it, which means it needs some type of attention. Okay, we don't know what it is at this point. However, if you look at the bottom uh, of my screen here, you'll see that there is, looks like a mathematical error that we're looking at. And if I click on my information, you'll see in further detail what this is looking for. So this is saying, um, you know, it calculated my subtotal and my total, my freight, it doesn't actually equal total amount. What's going on here, what's wrong? However, before I correct that, if you look at the other two transactions here, you'll see that you ha they have a green check mark. So what this basically means is that the system was able to go ahead and automatically, without human intervention, um, pick up the data elements that it's looking for, um, as well as validate it to make sure that it matches all the rules or it passes all the rules. And you can see down here that I have no error messages. This is what we, refer, what we refer to as straight through processing. So as I mentioned earlier, right, minimizing or eliminating the manual document handling process. Now, if all these three had green check marks on it, it wouldn't have stopped in this verification process. So if you imagine the flow of what's going on here, if you're receiving it via email, you know, your, your vendors would submit it via email or maybe through a fax. Maybe you have a, a fax server in-house where it would go ahead and put those images in, in a folder. We could monitor those folders. We can monitor that email automatically. We can pull it into Doc Alpha. We will perform the extraction. And if everything is correct, it'll go ahead and push this, um, uh, the, the, the information off into Great Plains, into the sales order transaction entry. So once again, not having to touch every single piece of paper or transaction, and if you do, maybe it's just a couple of clicks, okay? So that, that's our end goal. That's what we wanna get to so you can get your orders in. Um, you, know, you can go ahead and put them through uh, approvals if necessary, if needed, um, and then you know, the, the other half of the solution will come into play when, when Chris covers the, uh, the shipping process. But we don't live in a perfect world. There's gonna be some issues, um, and how does the users actually address those issues? So as you can see here, if you pay attention to my line item section down here, um, you'll see that it actually missed my first line item. Now, why did it do that? Uh, you know, this is, this is a fax, um, looks like it, it's a fax um, order. Um, it could be a number of things, it could be image quality, but it, it looks pretty good. Regardless, it stopped. So here, what do we do from this point? From this point, what we can do is, remember the point and click functionality that I mentioned earlier? Well, we can go ahead and just click on the second line down here. And once again, I'm not having to touch my keyboard, um, but I can go ahead and click on um, the first line, which is actually the line that I need. So if I click on that line, it's gonna to go to the description. My description, I want, you know, auto air vents. I can go ahead and highlight that. So I can either click or I can, you know, drag and um, actually identify which area I need. Quantity, we need 40. Um, you need a measure. So th these are our sample fields. The, all these fields are configurable depending on, on what you need and what you're looking to enter. Um, you know, you may, not want line items. You may only want header data. That's fine as well. We can do that. Um, the, the, the solution itself is very flexible, um, but this is just uh, you know, my, my example, my demonstration. And then um, total price. So I can go ahead and click on total price. And as I mentioned, the system is not perfect. It's here to assist the whole input process, um, but you know, it, is, it is a machine and um, it does have the ability to learn. However, it's not always perfect. However, what you can see here is that, um, you know, my, my extraction of this data is actually not right. And I still have an error down here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my F7 key, which actually takes me to a character verification process. 
And this is what I was talking about earlier, where you have the ability to correct um, the data uh, once it comes into the system. So here it's seeing this you no know, C6 as a one. You know, that could be a one, that could be an L, depending on what it is. Um, I will go, just go ahead and say that it's a one. If, a one. if it is an L, the user can simply uh, go ahead and change the value there. Um, if everything is read properly, the user would simply just go ahead and hit confirm. The decimal point is kind of suspect. I can go ahead and confirm that as well. And out of all that, my, my three documents, that's all the errors that actually was read by the system. So that's my verification error. As I mentioned, there's a two-step process, right? Verification of data, and the second one is validation of data. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit my F8 key and perform the validation. The validation now is telling me that my mathematical calculation is wrong. Right, so it's seeing the subtotal, it's, it's adding up my line items here and it's seeing my total is 19,355 and 50 cents. And then it's adding up my subtotal tax and freight and it's seeing, well, you know what? It doesn't really match. There's something wrong here. So the fields are always open. So the users can either rekey in this data or simply just correct it by adding a decimal point where it's needed. And as I tab out of here, you'll see that my error now has gone away. So at this point, my document is clean. I've went through the verification process. All the characters are read properly by the system. The validations, the mathematical calculations, you know, my, my customer um, exists in, in, my, in my system. And now at this point, I go ahead and click send batch and send this over into GP. So as I click that, it's gonna go ahead and actually upload. So just to give you an example of what that looks like, um, as it moves forward. So if you recall earlier, um, you know, we have, I showed you a, an image. So let me go ahead, just give you what this scenario looks like inside of Great Plains. Um, and we will work with, um, with your partner on, you know, maybe it's, it's a different section of where you want to enter um, all this data into, into the, your GP environment, or maybe it has to go through workflow. Um, so this is just basically a, a quick example. Um, you know, of what it looks like. So it, the, the end result is uh, pushing all that data into GP, creating that sales transaction entry. And then you, from there, it's like somebody, um, you know, automatically keyed in the information that is on the invoice that we have here into Great Plains. And now you would basically go through your, um, your process of, 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 um, moving this, this, this process along within, within the GP system. Okay, um, with that, I am gonna go ahead and actually, um, or maybe Adrian would, uh, shift the uh, presenters over to Chris so he can show you the shipping process. Where do I do that? Give me one sec here. All right, Chris. I think I can. No. Uh... I got it, Mark. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Adrian. So, just a couple of brief slides to talk about Starship first, uh, in in regards to what we're doing and uh, GP, and then we'll jump right into the demo. Uh, so, Starship is a multi-carrier uh, shipping solution. It will work with both uh, parcel carriers, as Adrian mentioned, and LTL. Um, we have support now for uh, close to 20 LTL carriers. Um, we're going to um, continue to build out the tools within Starship to help you automate the shipping process and also promote your brand, uh, including uh, branded labels and packing lists, um, the ability to email out ship notifications once the product uh, has been fulfilled and is out the door. Um, you can automate that by bringing over emails from the customer car. Um, also giving you some reporting tools in the dashboard so you can have some more insight on what your freight spend is and if you're um, really taking advantage of all the savings uh, that are available. Um, have some tools available also to automate the rate shopping routine uh, built into uh, sales order processing as well as um, an API. And uh, adding support for additional third-party insurance carriers. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, cost savings with the post office. Uh, 
by having uh, commercial plus pricing available. Those are discounts that are typically reserved for high volume postal shippers. Uh, and just by virtue of the fact of uh, shipping through Starship, you'll have access to the post office and these great rates. Uh, next release that we're working on uh, coming out in October shortly is 17.4.1. Uh, and That's going to change the uh, postage provider and Starship from Indicia to Pitney Bowes. We have a great uh, incentive offer um, that could potentially save uh, users up to about $35 a month and Pitney Bowes uh, for Starship customers. If you sign up now, they're offering three years of free service. Uh, they also have uh, flexible uh, funding options. Uh, you know, with Indicia, you have to provide either a credit card or set up ACH in order to pay for your postage. Uh, Pitney Bowes is also offering our customers a line of credit. Uh, we continue to add additional EDI partners um, in the GP space. Uh, we have existing integrations with High Jump, the True Commerce product, uh, Data Masons, Redtail, uh, SPS Commerce, BSI, and Edisoft. Uh, Starship has the ability to kind of streamline that EDI process by um, assigning the uh, serialized container ID within Starship um, at the package level, uh, printing your 128 uh, compliance labels in the same sequence as the rest of your shipping documents, and then also handing off this data to whichever the uh, EDI provider of your choice is. Uh, one of the key things we do with Starship is I bring over all the line item detail from GP. Uh, that's useful in uh, populating um, all, all of the export documentation that uh, you may need to provide if you're shipping overseas. Also, any hazmat paperwork or uh, populating your bill of lading for LTL shipments. Uh, also very useful for populating uh, packing lists. Uh, so you can uh, bring over uh, all the items, pack them out on the Starship screen, and we can show exactly which items go into each box. Uh, we also have multiple label formats uh, where you can get the packing list and the label together. We can also push that level of detail back in the GP as well. I mentioned the email notification. Uh, hopefully if you're proactive about notifying your customers, um, that the product is shipping. That'll reduce the number of inbound customer service calls that you'll receive. Um, you can also you know, build brand awareness by uh, promoting uh, your shopping card or you can attach a catalog. Uh, any of the shipping documents that are uh, produced out of Starship, those can also be PDF'd and inserted into the email. Uh, Starship also provides a dashboard. Uh, that's uh, where all of your reporting functionality is. Uh, also is a good customer service tool where um, users in the front office can go in and track the status of um, the shipments. Um, of course, anyone that has access to GP has the ability to do that uh, within the sales order processing screen or in the inquiry windows, but uh, this will save you on any of your Microsoft licenses. Uh, it's browser-based, so you can really give this to anybody in the front office that may need visibility to the shipping activity. And with that, we'll go ahead and jump into the demo. So working with GP, um, typically you have the uh, pick sheet that's produced out of, um, out of GP at the point that you're ready to do the shipping. Um, there's uh, support for uh, barcodes. If you want to scan in the document ID at a GP into Starship, you can do that here on the left-hand side. Uh, there's also an inquiry screen where you can browse the GP tables and uh, we've uh, done some redesign on this screen as well where you can have some filters or sorts here. You can define which fields you want to see in that view. Uh, there's also these filters where you can drill down into a subset of data if you want to look at a particular batch and that can narrow down the view of what it is that you're looking for. We'll go ahead and pick this first order here and get started with shipping. So Starship's gonna populate all of the order header information from GP over here on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, telling you uh, the company you're connected to. If you have multiple data sets of uh, GP data, we can connect into multiple companies. That's built into the box. Uh, it'll show you the document ID here. Uh, transportation information is made up of the ship method. We can pull that from the order header or the line item level in GP. Um, billing preference as well, if you have collect or third-party accounts uh, for your customers, if they want to pick up the shipping charges on their accounts, you can map over the billing preference and the account information. 
uh, transit time will show up here. Uh, so you can make a decision based on uh, the transit time. You can also create rules in Starship that would automatically select a carrier based on the, uh, the best service uh, to that destination, either at the cheapest rate or the fastest. Um, sender information, that's your return address. So if you have multiple business units or you do fulfillment on behalf of other companies, you can set up uh, multiple entities here within Starship. Also support for multiple accounts with all the carriers. Uh, your recipient information, that's the ship to address. We can pull that from the header or the line item level in GP as well. And with that, uh, we're going to validate the address. So this will uh, save you money on any uh, costly uh, shipping errors uh, where you have to correct the address and uh, you're also paying an additional service fee and accessorial for that. Uh, so this will capture that information right up front. Uh, you're working with a clean address. If you're writing freight back into the GP invoices, uh, then uh, you're capturing those fees right up front. We're going to look at the city, state, and zip. Uh, we can add the zip plus four postal formatting if you choose that as a preference. Uh, the street address, the suite, the apartment number, um, and then the zone, probably most crucial here. And so the residential flag will be checked automatically, and then any of the additional surcharges that are applied to that shipment will be calculated and inserted into the freight. Uh, let's see, we have our packaging here. Starship has a packaging database uh, that uh, you can basically build out. It has all the carrier packaging in here, but you can uh, add your own custom packaging here. You define the type of container and we can store the dimensions. And this is crucial if you have those oversized type of items where the carrier's charging you based on the dimensional weights or uh, the size of the package in, in on the truck versus the actual weight or the contents. Uh, we also have support for CubaScan scales where we can capture those uh, dimensions in real time where it, it scans the exterior dimensions of the box and then also weighs it and whichever the higher the two those are, that's what the carrier is going to charge you by. Uh, you'll notice the uh, weights already populated here. We can also bring over the item weights, aggregate that times the quantity of product to arrive at the weight of the box, or you can also you know, put it on a scale uh, once you reach the manifesting station. Um, support for multiple containers here as well. We can add a box, and then we can also pack that box. So that allows you to do the packing list where you can show the item distribution between containers. Uh, there's a repeat function. If you have multiple pieces, if you don't want to go one at a time, you just want to tell Starship how many boxes there are in total, we can go ahead and uh, add those all at once. So we've got our boxes packed. Um, we have a destination from GP service level. We're ready to process the shipment now. Up here in the control panel, you have all the various options or there's also keyboard shortcuts. You can kind of automate the shipping process by creating barcodes to emulate those keystrokes. So F5 or ship and process will complete your transaction, print out all of your documents, and then at that point, it's gonna feed the data back into GP. Next to that, you have control, uh, was it, uh, control S or save as draft. That will save the shipment as a draft. Maybe you wanna stage the order, label some product, and then come back to it at a later date. Uh, there's also support for future date shipments here. Uh, so you can select a date in the future and it'll show up on that day's manifest. All your order reference fields are here. Those are available for uh, uploading into the tracking system or printing out any of your documents, your order, your invoice, your GP document ID, customer's PO number. Uh, there's a section here for notes. So if you have uh, instructions or information that you want printed on a document, uh, there's also user defined fields all over the place uh, that has uh, built in support for expanding the database. If you're familiar with uh, GP's extender tables, uh, kind of similar functionality built into Starship where you can keep adding fields to the Starship database uh, and you can define uh, what those are. Uh, those are available at the shipment level, package, pallet level, items, and orders. Uh, I mentioned you have uh, the ship method here coming over from the order header or the um, line item level. If you have the user permission set up, they can always change that here or there's access to rate shopping, you can click on the dollar sign here, and that will call out to all the various carriers that uh, you have available, and then you can make a decision on how you want to ship that out. Um, we'll list them here from the cheapest down to the most expensive. You can also sort on the uh, transit time here. 
or alphabetically by the carrier. There's also filters. Uh, so if you have a date certain or time sensitive shipment that uh, needs to be there, you can map that over or the user can select it here and that'll filter out any of the options that uh, can't make that transit time. Now we'll go ahead and stick with the UPS service that was selected on the order and we'll process that here. So again, F5 or ship and process completes our transaction, manifests it with the carrier. We're going to get the tracking information, the labels, any documents that need to go with it, uh, print those out, and then we're also going to push that data back into GP. Uh, so here you have an example of uh, one of the formats that we can produce. Uh, you have both thermal and laser labels. Uh, you also have packing lists that can be uh, customized with any kind of branding information or additional reference fields, barcodes. And we have our second package here. We'll close that out. Once you do that, the cursor will come back over here to the field where you can select or scan the next order and you're ready to move on to your next sales transaction. So from here, we'll take a look back in GP at the results of that shipment that we just did. So there's four main areas that we're updating in GP, and then there's some additional uh, mappings that can be created. Starting at the top here, you have the order header notes. Uh, this is some basic information that we're gonna put into the order header letting the front office staff know that uh, this has been shipped out and they can anticipate when the product would be delivered by, the service level, uh, the billing type, how many pieces, the weight, kind of a small breakdown of what was uh, the contents of each of those packages. Any detail that you see on the screen in Starship that can be inserted into these notes, you have uh, total control over that um, and that can be customized easily. Uh, batch ID can be tagged here so we can move the shipment into a or move the order rather into a new batch uh, there's a lot of things you can do with batches in gp to kind of nudge it along the workflow or transfer that batch to invoice um, there's also the freight down here in the freight field we can include the freight charges plus any kind of markup or discounts that you want to include uh, for whatever the amount is that you want to invoice the customer uh, we can also capture freight charges uh, for your cost and any of the user-defined fields uh, can be used to map that data too. So you can see here we've taken our exposure on the freight, uh, cost of $29.82, and plugged it into this field here, uh, while we're going to invoice the customer for $34.29. So this way you can do some reconciliation, or if you have uh, shipments that you're uh, picking up the charges on, you can see uh, where you're losing money or you're charging too much. You can go back and do an audit over time, run a smart list and see uh, what those freight charges are. Uh, beyond the user-defined fields, uh, Starship also has a SQL extension, which could be used to get into other areas of GP um, or extender. Uh, that could also be expanded to support uh, other applications like SalesPad, CRM, your shopping cart, really any SQL uh, data source on the network we can read and write data to that way. Uh, of course, the tracking information will be plugged in here into the tracking table. So you'll have a record for each box that was shipped out. We'll keep appending that record over time. So if you do a partial shipment, uh, we'll keep adding records here for each of the packages. If you're shipping freight, then we'll also insert um, the pro number and the bill of lading number here for your LTLs type shipment. Uh, some other uh, additional things that you can do on the right back, um, you can set it up where um, you can update the ship method on the right back. We can do the address validation and you have the choice of inserting any of the corrected address information back into the order here. Uh, there's also a fulfillment option where uh, you can allow the user to change the quantity of product fulfilled on the Starship screen and then it will adjust the quantities here on the order for whatever you're going to invoice the customer for as well as the date shipped. Those are all you know, settings and preferences that can be enabled inside the interface. Okay, that's the right back on GP. A couple quick things here to show you on the Starship side. I mentioned line items as being one of the key things that we can help streamline your shipping process with. So Starship keeps a record of all of your GP products. Um, we can automate packaging here by taking a quantity of a product and putting it into a container automatically. And that's useful for case packs or 
uh, prepackaged goods that come in their own container. Um, we keep track of all of the international information uh, for shipping overseas, so the country manufacturer, country of origin, um, Schedule B code and description that's used for defining the goods on your uh, export documents like the commercial invoice. Uh, you have the EEI classification here, uh, what used to be known as SED, any single commodity over $2,500 in value, you need to file um, electronically with the government now. Uh, so we have built-in support for filing with AES or the ACE system. Um, flags here for the certificate of origin or NAFTA paperwork, if that's required for that product, you can flag it here automatically and then Starship will just automatically produce those documents. A uh, similar type of setup on the freight side, uh, NMFC code and description that's used to populate the bill of lading for your paperwork. Um, also uh, the freight class that's used in rating your LTL shipments. And then we also have a hazardous flag here. So if it's considered hazardous, then we have all the profiles for um, your hazardous materials to populate the uh, shipper's declaration paperwork. On uh, printing setup, you have a lot of standard documents that are available through the carriers, as well as generic uh, documents available through Starship. So you can kind of pick and choose uh, between uh, you know, the, the generic ones or the ones that have come directly from the carrier. Uh, same thing for all of your uh, export docs, your bills of lading. The advantage of using the Starship forms is you can go in and make uh, customizations to the format, adding logos or um, do any kind of you know, branding, any additional reference fields that you want to add. Let's take a look at a form here. So this is kind of what's underneath the document itself. You can take any of these objects here on the left-hand side and drag and drop them onto the page. Um, logos or graphics, you can draw on the page, uh, barcodes, um, bands of text where you see fields line up in columns here, individual fields or blocks of text. So any of this information could be wiped out here, replaced with your own info. Uh, any of the fields here can be edited. Uh, so you have basically anything that you see on the Starship screen can be captured and inserted onto a document. You've got different categories of data or you have a master list here at the bottom for every possible field. So once you get the setup and customize the way you want, you do a save as here, give that a unique name, and then this becomes another document that you can produce. At the document level itself, you have some additional preferences that can be enabled. Um, I mentioned PDFs. Those are useful if you want to keep an archive of documents outside of the Starship database. Uh, so someone that may not have access to Starship itself can go navigate to that directory and find a copy of the PDF. They're also useful for including as attachments with the emails that go out. Uh, multiple copies, especially for export documents, you may need more than one copy to be produced. Um, you can have it print out automatically or you can inspect the form first, see a preview like we saw in some of the other documents there, and then uh, decide you know, when you want to send it to the, uh, the printer. Uh, multiple carriers, you can pick and choose which carriers you want to enable for this form. And then you have conditions here at the bottom. Uh, Starship has uh, this sort of wizard uh, where you can add logic, uh, multiple levels at the ship via level uh, for carrier selection, um, for document printing, for sending emails. So here we've uh, created a rule that based on the country, you've got different qualifiers here. Whenever we're going to ship to France, we're going to pull this alternate version of that commercial invoice. So you can set that up to have you know, 10, 15 different iterations of the same document, each with their own special tweaks. And then Starship can go in and uh, you know, make the selection of that document uh, seamless where the operator doesn't have to remember to print the paperwork. You can do it based on the customer, the item, the country, you know, whatever that criteria may be. Next, we're going to take a look at the email notification. Um, it's a custom email program where you can send your own notices out. Um, you have the ability to add any logos or links back to your site. You can do some branding by changing the colors, the fonts. Um, all of those documents can be pulled from Starship here, so you can insert those as attachments. You could also have a standard attachment, maybe like a catalog or a warranty piece of literature that you want to send out with all of your emails, uh, directing people back into your shopping cart or your website. Uh, same sort of 
um, rules can be set up here where you can create logic to send the emails under certain circumstances. Um, you can also have uh, a default send schedule where you can have the email sent out real time. So as you're shipping throughout the day, these notices can be going out. You can link it to a certain time of day or an activity like the end of day process, or it can be done manually where all the emails are queued up, they're sent to a folder, and then someone with permission can go in and release those emails. So hopefully if uh, you're sending emails out to your customers, they are receiving those and they're taking care of checking on the tracking information themselves, and the order status that cuts down on the number of customer service calls you're receiving. I did mention the dashboard. That's another utility we give you um, as a way to do lookups. So anybody in the organization that may need visibility to the shipping information, you can give them access to this tool. And they can do lookups here using all of the GP fields. Uh, so your, your document ID, your order, your invoice number, customer ID, customer's PO, and the address fields. Those can be used as sorts to narrow down the view and find the shipment that you're looking for. With that, uh, I'll bring up a view of the order or the shipment here. I have a copy of the email, uh, tracking status, um, all the tracking for each of the boxes, a uh, breakdown of the products and quantities that were shipped, and all of the shipping charges. There are also crystal reports over here. Uh, those are built into Starship uh, to give you uh, the ability to do some lookups over time uh, to look at uh, your shipping costs, on-time deliveries. There's a uh, background tracking that you can enable in Starship that will go out and look at the status of all your shipments. So if you're paying for expedited freight and it's showing up um, in the afternoon, you, you're entitled to a refund for that. So Starship can catch that, give you a report of any of those exceptions. Uh, same thing for any of the addresses, any of those corrections, that we can give you a report uh, with any of those things. Take that back to your CRM database or back in the GP and make those corrections on the customer card. Um, I mentioned Crystal Reports as the engine that's built into Starship. Uh, of course, if you're using GP, you may be um, using SmartList or uh, SQL reporting services. Starship does have SQL views that are exposed, uh, so those can easily be uh, queried and you can extract information directly from the Starship tables. All of our data typically lives on the same SQL server as GP, so uh, anything that you're looking for is easily found there. Okay, that is pretty much all I had prepared for today's webinar. Thank Adrian, you, Chris. I'll take it back to you. Great presentation, Chris and Mark. Really appreciate it. We have a few questions here, and I do have a poll that I'd like to launch while we're announcing the questions, if I may. So if you can take a minute to answer this, that would be awesome. Are you interested in learning about any of the following, more about any of the following, intelligent, uh, dynamic sales order uh, capture by Artzel, um, Dynamics GP Starship shipping op automation, or nothing at this time. If you could just take a second to answer that, that'd be great. And we have a question from Deborah. Deborah, thank you so much. Uh, do computers have to be linked to install the dashboard? That's what that one's for you, Chris, I believe. Uh, they do need to be on the network and have uh, visibility to wherever the Starship data is, um, but it doesn't take up a seat of either GP or Starship's licensing. It's browser-based, so you can really install that anywhere uh, that you need to, and then it'll live on the desktop as a shortcut. And Mark, I have a question for you. We issue a large number of purchase orders for our manufacturing process. Do you match invoices back to purchase orders for payment? Yes, we can. I certainly do that. So as long as uh, the data is available for us to validate, we can do the matching. And Chris, we have a couple questions for you. We have a fleet of our own trucks. Can we add them into Starship? Uh, you can. There is an option to add custom carriers. So you would just create a carrier, uh, whatever you wanted to call your own internal fleets, um, add a SCAT code um, that can give you the ability to print package and pallet labels, uh, packing lists, bills of lading, manifests, you know, any documents that you might need out of Starship. Um, we can calculate rates, um, you know, 
using either um, like a per pallet rate or per pound rate. Um, there's also a user defined carrier uh, parcel matrix. So if it's more of a you know small package type of delivery, um, we have the ability to maintain rates inside of Starship that way. There's also a TMS platform that Starship's integrated to. So if you have tariffs uh, that you're using to calculate charges, uh, there's also options for setting up automated rating that way through an API. And we have another question here. We use Panatrack for pick and pack. Do you integrate with that? I guess that's for you, Chris? We, we do. Yeah, that's a great question. I didn't really touch upon that, but we have an existing integration that we collaborated with Panatrack on that um, as you're going through the fulfillment process on the handhelds in Panatrack, a barcode uh, label is assigned to each container as a license plate. And when you reach the Starship uh, terminal, you're able to scan in the license plate off of any pallet or package, and it will retrieve all that data. We have shared tables that are added to GP. Uh, that's more or less a sandbox that both Panatrack and Starship use to share data. Uh, so it's a fairly tight integration. Um, and it's been around for a number of years. Um, so if I'd be happy to, you know, show it to you and answer any questions. We could certainly set up a joint webinar with with uh, with Panatrack to show you that. And uh, we have a question from Anne. Does the dashboard add-on service does that come with Starship? It does. It's included with the base Starship package, and it's unlimited users. So really, anyone in the organization that uh, might make use of that could have access to it. And I see that 75% of you have voted. I'm going to flash up the contact screen here. I'm going to close out this poll. And I'm going to share my screen. Oh, I need to go one more slide. Okay, so here's the contact information. Thank you, Chris and Mark. We really appreciate your presentations and and thank you so much audience for spending this uh, last 50 minutes with us. We are finishing up with 10 minutes to spare and we just really appreciate uh, the time. We know it's hard to come by, so thank you for learning a little bit more about these two solutions. And um, Chris, would you like to offer any closing remarks? Uh, no, if anyone has any questions on Starship, integration with GP, customization options, any of the material that we presented today, or Panatrack, of course, uh, feel free to contact me here at the number or uh, email below here. And Mark, would you like to offer any closing remarks? Yep, uh, yeah, I just want to thank everybody for attending. Uh, thank you, Adrian, for hosting this. Um, it's kind of hard to see my email address, but there's actually an underscore uh, between the Mark um, and the you. So I just want to make sure if you guys are going to email me, please place an underscore um, in between those two uh, letters. Also, uh, bear in mind, um, you know, if you're looking to process uh, or automate other document types um, within your organization, typically sales order is one of the uh, ones, ones we address. Um, AP invoices is also another one um, where you have a lot of manual document handling um, coming into play. So, or we can even you know, anywhere from HR documents or handwritten and what have you. So if you guys have a, you're looking for a, a document automation, limiting your or eliminating your manual data entry process, please reach out and uh, we can talk. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark and Chris. Hey, everybody, have a great day. And we're close to the weekend, so have a good weekend. Take care. Thank you all. Thanks.